Okay. Well, it is now 7 o'clock, so I'll go ahead and call our regular meeting to order for May 7th, 2020. Uh, turn it over to Commissioner Headland to lead us in invocation. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to meet together. And Lord, we just pray and thank for all the workers that have been working so diligently the last month and a half. And Lord, we just pray that we get through this virus quickly and and then heal in our land. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Next up on our agenda is the actual approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve. All right, we've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to the vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next up is our public hearing section. Um, this is a little odd. We've always recorded, uh, well, not always. We've recorded our meetings in the past for our YouTube channel. This is the first time we've actually had a virtual meeting. So uh, before I open that up, I would just like to comment uh, to anyone that may be on the phone that wanted to make a, uh, any kind of a comment, so please state your name, address, and uh, and we'll go from there. So we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing, uh, item A, which is the uh, fiscal year ending 2021 proposed budget. Um, Phil, was there anything that you wanted to add to that before we open comments from the public? Um, no, sir. We, um, we have two callers on the line with us. You just let me know and I can call on them whenever you're... Uh Whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and open up to uh, comments from the public. Again, if, uh, if you'd like to make a comment, please state your name and address. And uh, Mr. Cordero will call on you um, to proceed. And it uh, looks like we have two callers. Uh, I'll call on the first caller first. Um, uh, phone number would be 919-496-1679. Would you like to make any comments? I have no comments. Yes, please. Go ahead. No, I don't have any comments. Oh, no comment? Okay. That's, hey, again, sorry. Uh, this is this is kind of new to us, so we're, we're still working out the bugs here. Thank you very much. Uh, the next call we have on the line is uh, phone number area code 252-560-3738. I believe that's Mr. Bob Clark. Yes, it is. Do you have any comments, sir? Uh, no, I'm just present to uh, uh, address any questions that come up by the commissioners or anybody during the meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have no one else on the call, and um, I'll let the record reflect that we did, in the agenda advertisement, have an electronic method for those that were interested in publicly commenting, both during the public comment period and during this public hearing and there were no registrants uh, using that form. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much, Mr. Cordero. Yes, sir. So we'll go ahead and close the hearing, and we'll move into citizens' comments. Uh, and the same would apply. If there's anyone attending uh, via telephone or uh, video, if you have a public comment to make, the floor is now yours. And I'll call on the uh, same phone number, area code 919-496-1679. Would you like to make a comment, sir? No, sir. Excellent. Thank you. There is uh, no one else that would uh, be making comments because the other person that's on the call with us, Mr. Bob Clark. All right. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll move along from citizens' comments and move right into the financial report. All right. Moving right along into the uh, consent agenda. You have your packets in front of you. The action requested here is to approve the consent agenda as submitted. All right, we've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is old business, and item A here is to consider contract with Bobbit Design Build Team for design build services in connection with the construction of a public works facility. Okay. The action requested here is to direct the town administrator to negotiate a contract. Uh, are there any comments, questions, concerns from any of the commissioners that need to be addressed? So right now they're projecting to 
build the project within budget at $1 million. Um, the contract itself, however, is uh, designed in such a way that we're selecting the most highly qualified firm. Um, and so the, the way forward from here is that they've indicated that they would be, they're qualified, and we agree that they're most highly qualified firm of the uh, four firms that submitted uh, interest uh, for this project. And they will lead the bidding process for the actual construction. So at this point, uh, because of the ways that uh, North Carolina statutes govern how we can procure a project like this, um, just for the design phase, we're required to choose not based on cost, but on who is the most qualified firm. So we've selected Bobbitt as the most qualified firm. The contract that's before you outlines their qualifications and the general parameters of, of the project. Um, and they'll be submitting a cost estimate to us when more design is done and we can use that data to make a, a, a very firm opinion of probable cost. But at this point, it's their opinion that they can meet the intent of the project within the budget. Does that answer your question, sir? Um, it's not for their cost, it's for the design and the build. We cannot, by law, solicit a cost for the design. We can only choose a firm based on a qualification selection based procedure. Yes, sir. Um, I will also note that I'm happy that we had four firms that are interested. This is a very uh, kind of boilerplate uh, contract, and um, I ask that, you know, Again, the action requested is that we, we proceed and you direct me to negotiate and execute the contract. If I have, if there's any additional questions, I'm happy to address those as well. Do I hear any additional questions? All right, hearing none. Again, the action requested here is to direct the town administrator to negotiate a contract. Uh, I will entertain a motion. All right. Got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to the vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item B, consider contract with Kimley Horn for construction. Consider contract with Kimley Horn for construction, engineering, and inspection services in connection with the proposed Main Street Improvements Project. Action requested here is to direct town administrator to negotiate contract. And I'll actually interject uh, just for a moment to, to say that we still have a little bit of work to do on this. So if we could uh, get a motion to uh, table this until next meeting, that I'd be greatly appreciative. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. We've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, item C, presentation of certificate of sufficiency, Albemarle Properties, LLC, bless you, lot two of Youngsville Commerce Center. And there she is. You're, you're always moving around on me, and I can't tell where you put, put a bell on you or something. Um, all of their paperwork is in order, and we are ready to move forward with the public hearing next month, and we'll also. Um, as long as they don't withdraw between now and then, we'll adopt the ordinance for annexation to be effective June 30th. Okay. All right. Thanks for that, Ms. Hurd. Uh, so the next item is uh, item D, set public hearing on annexation petition, Albemarle Properties, LLC, lot 2 of Youngsville Commerce Center for June 11, 2020. Do I hear a motion? All right. First and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? All right, motion carries. And item E, uh, fiscal year end 2021 budget ordinance with a tax rate of 0.655 per $100 valuation. Uh, two items here um, to take under consideration. Uh, the first action requested here is to adopt the fiscal year 2021 budget ordinance with a tax rate of 0.655 per $100 valuation. Do I hear a motion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, that's correct. Yes, sir. Your constituents, thank you. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Any additional questions? 
All right. Do I hear a motion to adopt the fiscal year 2021 budget ordinance? All right. We've got a first and a second. All right. Commissioner Brain with the second there. All right. And any discussion before we move to the vote? All right. Hearing none. All in favor? And any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the second action requested here is to adopt proposed fee schedule effective July 1, 2020. Ms. Cordero, uh, Ms. Hurd, is there any additional information we need on that? No, sir. Okay. All right. We got a first. All right. First and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving right along into new business. Uh, item A here is the resignation of Todd Casado from the Youngsville ABC Board. Uh, the action requested here is to accept the resignation with gratitude. I'm assuming there's no additional comments that need to be made on that. I do not <laughs> think okay. so. Um, he's certainly been an asset to us, and we wish him the best. He's moving because he's accepted a new uh, employment opportunity in Virginia, and so he'll be moving out of the area. But he, in the short time that he's been with us, about six months, he's certainly contributed greatly. So we, we appreciate it. We'll begin to solicit a new member for that seat and bring that to your uh, attention when we have uh, a highly qualified pool of applicants. Perfect. All right, we got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? That motion also carries. Uh, reports and other business. Um, really don't have too much. Uh, just really, really, really hoping that we can get back to some sense of normalcy soon. Um, being cooped up in the house and trying to work with three kids and a dog is just, wow, yeah, it's fun stuff. So um, that's about all I had. I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Cordero. Thank you, sir. I uh, just wanted to uh, remind everyone that uh, today is the National Day of Prayer, um, and we actually did receive a, a very, um, what I would say, warming uh, message from uh, Stephen Wade, who's the lead pastor at Faith Baptist Church, so I'll just read that brief message for you. Uh, he says, first, I want you to know that on this National Day of Prayer, I'm praying for God's blessing upon your lives. Thank you for all you do in leading our town. Second, Faith Baptist Church Youngsville will be hosting a prayer gathering in our parking lot at 5 p.m. this coming Sunday in alignment with Governor Cooper's a provision for outdoor worship gatherings during phase one of his plan to reopen the state. We would like to formally invite all the town officials to join us as we pray for our town, state, and nation. We've asked everyone who plans on attending to bring a chair and to practice social distancing as a way to respect each other and the community well. We have long enjoyed serving our neighbors in this community and look forward to continue to do that this weekend through prayer. It will be our privilege to pray for any specific needs you would share personally and or on the behalf of our town in response to this email or in person on Sunday. Please let us know if you will attend so we can recognize you. Thank you for leading Youngsville through this difficult season. We are grateful for you and our partnership. God bless. And that's all I have. All right. Commissioner Red. All right. Commissioner Hedlund. Excellent. Sure. All right. Thank you for that, Commissioner Hedlund. Uh, Commissioner Wiggins.
Yes, sir. We could uh, put that in for next month and put a patrol operation in for loud noises and vehicles with loud mufflers. We kind of been reactive to some of that over the COVID-19. So we've kind of laxed with that because there's, there's distancing and we want our officers to be safe, you know, safety. So we can, this next month, we can put that in the report if, if we can relax some of the restrictions. Yes, sir. It's always been a problem. But we can, you know, once the restrictions lax, we can start doing, you know, officers to become sick. It will be safer to be able to do these things. Sir, I just wanted to ask one quick question, which is, uh, is there something specific that you're looking for in the report as far as data on output of the uh, police department's operations that we can... Okay. Specifically on those two issues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Wiggins, anything else? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Is there a specific day of the week that does it happen usually on the weekdays or on the weekends or all the above? Everything. Got it. Thank you. Off peak. Got it. But it's both early in the morning and late at night. Got it. All right, uh, Commissioner Johnson. Anything else? All right. Uh, moving along, Commissioner Brain. Campo is uh, beginning their northeast area study update um, project and a couple of dates. Uh, I believe Phil uh, sent those out in an email earlier. But, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we got a couple of meeting dates they want people to participate in if possible. That is June 9th at 5.30 p.m. and June 13th at 10 a.m. Uh, I was trying to find in my email if they had a location for that or if they're still planning on doing those virtually. I, I could not find those. Um, but if you're interested in participating, let me know. I'm on the, uh, the oversight team. And Phil, are you on that um, stakeholder oversight uh, team? Aaron is. Aaron is. Aaron is. Yes, okay. sir. All right. um, that's all I have. Thanks. And I'll remind everyone just to dovetail off that, that uh, the uh, – the Northeast Area Study is going to be holding several stakeholder meetings, and they're going to have a meeting on it's on Thursday, May 21st at 8 a.m. That's Thursday, May 21st at 8 a.m., and that's going to be an economic impact stakeholder meeting. So uh, the, the focus of that meeting will be um, how transportation uh, changes and other planning-related changes that are going to be happening in the, in the, the capital region, uh, the state capital region, will affect economics and things that the they can all incorporate into the plan to improve local economies. So if anybody's interested in attending that meeting, certainly let me know, and I'll uh, let you know uh, the date and coordinating details of whether it's going to be a remote meeting or an in-person meeting, et cetera. Okay. Anything else? Commissioner Brain, you're good there? Okay. All right. Uh, we'll turn it over to planning and zoning. Mr. Clark, are you still with us? Mr. Clark? Uh, I am there. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, thank you. Yours, yours, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, one item, uh, the uh, planning board uh, has provided a recommendation. Uh, they had their meeting uh, this week on Tuesday concerning a couple items. Uh, there will be a public hearings before the board of commissioners at your June meeting uh, concerning uh, a rezoning of uh, about 11 acres of property uh, uh, Mr. Eddie Kiever has uh, off of uh, Wolfpack Lane uh, and to the north of those industrial areas. 
where ITS is located. And secondly, we have a zoning text amendment coming up concerning a, a little bit of a twinking of one uh, one provision of the ordinance uh, concerning um, uh, outside storage. Uh, Pine Board has provided recommendations for approval on those, but the hearing will be scheduled and advertised uh, uh, for that meeting for the commissioners. So. Uh, and uh, that's uh, not a quasi-judicial, that's a uh, standard procedure for the Board of Commissioners to consider public comments and take into consideration the Planning Board's recommendation. All right. Anything else to add, Mr. Clark? Uh, I did attend the uh, Technical Coordinating Committee with Campo this morning. Uh, and... Uh, Nothing direct to report other than that uh, everybody is uh, looking at the uh, uh, current NCDOT uh, funding situation and uh, hoping and making sure that we've got everything on, in line for continuing with the projects that uh, the town has. But um, we're um, anxious to move forward with our Main Street project. We definitely are. Definitely are. There's a lot of smiles going around the room, so yes, I think we all concur. We're, we're definitely on that same page. <laughs> Very good. Anything but that's else? all I have to report tonight. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Clark? I had one uh, quick one. Um, have you been in touch with uh, anyone from Focus Design Builders? Um, I, I know... That I actually got a text from, from one of the representatives needing Aaron, but obviously um, she's out at the at the current moment. So I didn't know if, if they had a moment, had any chance to get in touch with you in regards to some things they're they're looking at here in town. Um, not directly uh, received that information this afternoon and uh, am available to uh, address any questions they may have and certainly uh, uh, can reach out to them as well, but uh, yes, aware so that uh, they're interested in doing some development. And Mr. Clark has reviewed the conceptual designs that, that you've ordered via email. Perfect. Okay, that's what I need. Right. All right. I don't okay. believe there's any other questions uh, for you at this time, Mr. Clark. We appreciate your attendance. Well, thank you very much, and uh, um, our, our our good uh, planner, uh, Aaron Klinger. Um, I'm sure we'll be back and is ready to roll next time. Sounds good. Well, you take care. Stay safe over there. Um, All right. Thank you. Mr. Cohen? Nothing to report for me right now. Thank All you. right. And now we'll go to the police report. Ms. Kimball, good hey, to no, see sir. you. Um, we answered. We reported 161 calls this month compared to 273 last month. Of those 161 calls, we uh, took 10 reports and had written eight citations. As you can see, we had a couple of minor larcenies, uh, some soap from Dollar General. There was also, uh, on 415, there was also a house located on 320 North Nassau Street that seemed to be broken into twice, but we believe that it was not. It was people there trying to sell the home. I think we, we think that it was people looking at the house and had gone in there uh, without an appointment. Uh, we also recorded three motor vehicle ac accidents for the month of April compared to seven in the previous year. And we had one significant injury, injury which was on Main Street, uh, a motorbike. Uh, actually didn't slow down and slid into the back of another vehicle and uh, the person was transported to the hospital. With patrol operations, you know, they're limited for what the COVID-19 is being done. Uh, we're just answering the calls that we, we're trying to do and keep our officers safe and, you know, until we can get through some of this stuff. Some of, some of the calls we take by from With community policing, um, Aaron has put together a visual law enforcement torch run, which is it's online. You can sign up through the end of May and run through a torch run to raise some money for, her, for some of the stuff that she's doing. Uh, our national night out is still set set for August 4th, so the Relay for Life uh, is, is to be determined with uh, everything going on right now. With that said, uh, 
We also have a new officer coming on board. He's starting May 11, which is next Monday. We also are doing, we have revamped our training program, our field training program. We've redesigned it so that the officer can get, and the officer can be more involved with the community and they can get to know the officer more at a, in a better way. It's a 12 week program. He's, they're designed to do learning based exercises. There's four learning based exercises in the 12 week program that they'll do once a week and present it to their FTO. On top of that, they have to do what's called a neighborhood portfolio, which we give them a specific community, a part of the, in our community, a part either Laurel Oaks, Holden Forest, Patterson Woods, uh, Main Street, that they have to visit the community people, talk to the, uh, the residents in those areas, get their concerns of what we're trying, what their concerns of what the town needs and what that area needs, whether it's speeding, loud noise, et cetera. They'll put together a, a whole portfolio on that. They got to go and at the end of the 12 week program, before they graduate from the FTO program, they have to present it to a board. Now that board, uh, there'll be someone from that community will be there to listen in. So they have to present it with some people from the department, any town officials will schedule it with Phil and Yuck and the mayor. Y'all can be there to listen in on what they're presenting for that part of what they found and what However, that works. It'll all kind of come together in the end. Uh, I believe, you know, we believe it's a great program because it gets the the officer and the community together even closer. So when, as we grow, each development could have a HOA, not HOA, they'll be able to present and be able to go to these meetings with a lot more information than just kind of coming out of the, out of the dark. Questions? Uh, it's Jason Steinbrunner. And he comes to us from the town of Lewisburg. Um, and uh, in, in connection, sorry, go ahead. This is Jim. Got it. You said you were going to spell it? I was, yeah. but I guess it's not. <laughs> B, B R U N N E R. Steinbrunner. Yes, yes, sir. And um, <laughs> Officer Jason, local board, yeah. Out of the uh, the the field training officer program, uh, Chief Whitley wanted to, sol to to solicit your feedback and nominations of citizen evaluators. So, in order for the field training officer to exit successfully this field training officer program and become you know on his own, right, as an officer, uh, those evaluators, those citizen evaluators, will need to sign off on their presentation and provide feedback, and that will become part of the permanent record of that officer's file. I mean, obviously, they'll be able to use the feedback to improve their communication skills with HOAs and other citizen groups. And so if you have anyone that you think might be interested in uh, participating in such an exercise, we welcome your feedback and nominations. That's a really good idea. I like that. Credit to Assistant Chief Kimball and Chief Whitley for coming up with the idea. Thank you for that, Chief Kimball. Um, anything else that we need to be made aware of? No, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I did not get anything from Assistant Chief Graney with the fire department, um, so I'm going to list that as no reports, and we'll move along to Mr. Smith, Parks and Recreation. Okay, good talking to you there, sir. And after that, we've got Ms. Hurd. I do want to look over here to find you over there. You're not there. All right. And we've got a stranger in the midst. Remains. Do we have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Anything that you like that? You don't have to. All right. Sounds I'm sure Randy would say that he appreciate everyone's patience with, you know, everybody being at home. They've had probably a 25 to 35 percent increase in solid waste and, and brush, et cetera, because everybody's at home doing their spring cleaning, and uh, they've been trying really hard to keep up with the grass, which is also growing rapidly because of the warm weather and all the rain we've got recently, and, and, and pick up all the all the waste off all the streets at the same time. So if you see something, you can certainly provide me feedback, and I'll make sure that it gets identified in, in our work uh, management process. But 
we appreciate your patience as we try to service everybody. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for that. Um, next on the agenda is closed session. And we do need to go into closed session to discuss NCGS 143-318.11 personnel. I will entertain a motion. All right, we got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? All right, we're going into closed session. So we're back in open session. <laughs> Anything else I need to add to that? Nothing else. Okay, perfect. I, hey, I, I want to do it by the book. I, I'm not a I'm not a Roberts Rule, you know, expert. So um, we have a new parliamentarian. So we so again we, we went into closed session um, for personnel. Um, we're now out, um, and I will entertain a motion to accept and approve the First Amendment to Employment Contract dated 20, uh, January 14, 2019. All right. Got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. And any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, if there's nothing else, means adjourned. Um, I'd yep. like to ask what's on your tie? Flowers. Uh, it's so far away I just couldn't tell. I can barely My see old it. eyes. Dude, I know. Anymore. i got to wear ring glasses. It's bad. So. I'll just also add if we want to make a motion to adjourn. If somebody wants to make that motion. Very nitpicky. I know. <laughs> <laughs> see, man, that's kind of stealing my thunder, man, because I'm always used to just gaveling this thing out. I take back the question about your tie. <laughs> You can still make that statement after the motion is. Okay. All right. I'll entertain. All right. So it's time to adjourn. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All right. We've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none. All in favor? And any opposed? All right. This meeting is adjourned.